Ellen McCauley at Pray It Off in Syracuse, New York. Okay, so we gained some weight, we were stressed out, so what are we going to do? You know what's really interesting is sometimes you can even do the right things. You can even eat healthy and exercise and still gain weight because you're stressed. Because our bodies are from the caveman days. They think when we're stressed that there's some big dinosaur out to get us. And it's hanging on to that weight in case we need it to fight the dinosaur. So unless we get rid of the stress and take some deep breaths, move a little more, we can still be doing all the right things. And here's what's going to happen then. You eat healthy, you exercise, three weeks go by. You don't lose any weight, you gain a pound, then you say, forget it, get me a sub with extra mayonnaise. Because you say, I, I tried, you know, you do the Ellen routine, I work so hard, I try so hard. And I even gained weight. That's why stress is so critical to address because you can do the right things and it doesn't help. So we need to get back to the basis, bakes basics of stress. We need to wonder what's going on. You know what? I used to get very stressed about politics because it all made me so nervous. I didn't want to watch the news, everything. This one saying that one's a liar, and this one, then the China, then the bomb, and all this. And now I just go, Jesus, I trust in you. I'm 67 years old. I'm praying for my children and my grandchildren and the life they will have. But we cannot, we can only affect our little corner of the world. That's all. We can do the best we can. Now, when you are recognizing the warning signs of stress, and before you start to eat, you stop. You say, am I hungry, angry, lazy, or tired? Halt. Hungry, angry, lazy, tired. The thing is, most of the time when we eat when we're hungry, it's a meal, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Even during the pandemic, even though I gained weight, I still didn't snack. I cannot snack. Snack's my undoing. So if you are a bad snacker, try to give it up for three meals. Also, Costco, if you don't have a membership, it's the best money you could spend. We got these nectarines there. They are like better than a hot fudge sundae. I'm serious. They are so delicious, the juice dripping down. <laughs> delicious. Also, you've got to breathe, practice relaxation skills. And many people said to me at the scale last week, Ellen, I had no willpower over the pandemic. My willpower went out the window. Willpower does not work for stress eating. Because eating serves a need. It's a, it's a human, normal need. It's soothing. It's comfort. How many cooking shows are there on TV? You know, when I get my nails done, she's got the cooking show on, and I'm like this. You know, they make these things, which I've never made in my life and probably never will, but they look so good, don't they? And it's like cooking is an art. It's a hobby. But... If eating is the most exciting activity you have going, then you're going to keep going back to it. If you get up in the morning and you say, what am I going to eat today? Woohoo! Then you need to find some other avenues in your life that have as much meaning. We can find it through prayer. We can find it through helping others. I come from a long line of people that when people, my family, when I got home from an event, the first thing they'd say is, what'd you eat? And then you go into graphic description. Well, they had a buffet, and on the buffet was this and that and this and that. You always wanted to know what they had to eat. Now, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm not saying any of those things are bad. But we have and we're born with an empty hole that God put there so that we could fill it with him, with our desire to be closer to Jesus. Not so we could keep stuffing donuts in there. <laughs> I mean it. Now, we have gone through an apocalyptic time. And I don't mean that lightly. 
if the, if the worst thing we did was gain 10, 15, 20 pounds, so be it. We're here now. Here's the top 10 stress eating symptoms. You don't take time for stress relief because you've got too much to do. How's that for a catch-22? You can't get enough sleep, you can't exercise, you can't breathe because you have too much to do. But what you got to learn to do is delegate. Bob and I say, okay, here's what we need to do. And he's like, I'll do this, and I go, I'll do that. Bob cannot, he doesn't want to do the bills. He doesn't want to know a thing about the finances. Eyes glaze over. Mm -hmm. He says, you do the finances, I'll do the laundry. Okay. We have a delegation. Now, you might say, well, I'm lucky I can come to pray it off because my kids want me to babysit all the time. You know what? That's great. Having grandchildren is perfect. But not if you're being abused. You're retired, so you could have some time to yourself. You have to set boundaries. Otherwise, you're too stressed out. You eat too fast. Oh, my gosh. Bob and I have really made a point of trying to eat slower. Have you ever eaten with someone and you're having a conversation and you look over and they're done? You know, well, or are you done? You know, maybe, maybe you're done. Put the fork down. Have a conversation. We talk about our days. Here's the best part about being married to me. I care about the same crap that he cares about. He cares about my crap, I care about his crap, and I say, guess what happened? I, every day, park in the same spot. It's my special spot. Last week, someone was parking in my spot every day. I get there at 6 o'clock, why were they in my spot? So I would text Bob, someone's in my spot. He's like, how dare they get in your spot? And it made me feel better that he cared. That someone, but no one else would. I, I could text Katie and say, someone's in my spot. She'd say, there's 1,841 other spots, Ellen. Let's go into another one. This is what you do. I call it the law of diffusion. Something's bothering you, you tell someone who cares. Don't tell someone who doesn't care. And there's plenty of them out there, believe me. <laughs> you tell someone who cares. If you say, Ellen, that's my problem. I have no one who cares. You call me on a Sunday afternoon. I'll put the Buffalo Bills game on pause. <laughs> and then you say to me, guess what happened to me? I will take your side every single time, even if you're wrong. I might tell you later, you know when I took your side then? <laughs> if you need someone, once you tell someone else, once you have that law of diffusion, I tell Bob, I tell my mother, my mother's like, are you kidding me? How could that happen to you? That's awful. I feel so much better. I don't want to eat as much because I have people who care. And you know, I have a lot of mantras too. It's okay. It's okay. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, lead and guide me. Jesus, Jesus, help me. I do these mantras, and they really help me. I walk into work, I'm like, I'm giving you this day, Jesus. Show me the way. Let my light shine. Because sometimes people are putting a barrel over my light, and I don't like it, but help me. Help me, Jesus. Say mantras. It really helps. You know what's interesting? If you grew up and food was so important, we can break the chain. We can. It's hard. But we can stop the insanity. You know, I know I can do it because when my sister Kathy died in 2016, it was one of the most stressful times of my life to see the suffering that she went through. And yet, I was on Whole30. I didn't have a drink. I didn't have dairy gluten or sugar. I think that helped me get through it. I don't know about you guys, but I felt so good this week. I felt like I was in control again. Anyone else feel a little more control this week? Anybody? Come on. Yes. 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 And that feels good. When we're in a world where there's no control, where we have no control, if we can control our moving and our eating healthy, it feels good. So we already proved we could do it. I did it for two solid years, Christmas, holidays. I proved I could do it. I can do it again. And you know, so often we eat because we're stressed because we take things personally. Don't we? Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. and we get caught up in the drama. We'll have a whole meeting just on drama sometime. It's always mm -hmm. a good meeting when we talk about drama. So I can say to you, stop dramatizing, dramatizing, but we'll talk a little bit more about it. The thing is, who I, this is so hard for me to say. I spent 66 and a half years saying I care so much about every single thing. And lately I'm like, do I really care about that? Like at work, when something happens, I'll say, you know, this is my last job, not my first job. Does it really matter? No. And sometimes people will say, what do you think? And I think, I say, I think it's great. Do I think it's great? No. <laughs> but sometimes it's just easier, better. I don't need to cause any drama. So, and we need to recharge ourselves. I don't know about you, but as tired as I am on Thursday nights, P.O. recharges me. It recharges me. Gotta stop there, Bob.